Salut YouTube, comment allez-vous? Welcome to this video all about French idiomatic expressions, some of that more advanced French language learning stuff that we're going to jam on today. I'm very, very excited to walk you through some of my favorite French expressions, sayings, idioms that I find really cute, really hilarious. You know I'm a bit of a fan of doing these videos. I have recently done a video on some French expressions that are rather filthy, so some dirty French expressions. I've done a video with my mother-in-law. Uh, I love getting into this more advanced layer of the language, so I hope that you are going to enjoy this video. And today's theme for these expressions is all about expressions using food. The French love their food and they love making metaphors and idioms out of their food, so that's what we're going to go through today. Now it is the middle of the year and it's summer in the northern hemisphere or winter in the southern hemisphere and if you are doubling down on learning a language right now you're definitely going to want to listen up because my wonderful partners over at Lingoda are giving you an exclusive offer which is 30% off the first month if you sign up for their famous Lingoda marathon. So Lingoda is an online business school and you can take classes in English, business English, French, German or Spanish and I use them personally to get all the way up to French level C1. They're absolutely awesome because you can learn from anywhere online 24 7 and be connected instantly with native professors from around the world either in private lessons or in very small groups with up to maximum five students per group. I think what works really well with the marathon in particular is that you're building the habit. How many times have you said I want to do that but you never get around to it, you never end up prioritizing it or making time for it. And the thing is with the marathon is that you can sign up for either three six or twelve month periods and you're committed you're in and you are dedicated to the experience and you're building that habit of just making language learning a part of your daily life what's also really awesome about the marathon is that if you attend over 90 percent of your classes you are eligible for a 400 euro cashback as well I personally did the group classes and I love the small intimate experience because the professor really is there to put things into context share everyday language share those idiomatic expressions and it really does take the class materials to the next level. I struggled away trying to learn French on my own for so long and it wasn't until I was actually speaking and conversing in French that my language really took off. So as Lingoda was founded in Germany they are currently celebrating their summer, summer school and all of that good stuff so if you want to sign up to the classes Check out my link down below and you can use the code SUMMER10 to get 30% off your first month's payment. But that is only valid for the first 50 signups and for packages over 100 euros. It's not valid for the Lingoda Sprint product. So if you want that 30% discount, go, 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 be one of the first 50 signups. And otherwise, if you're not 100% convinced yet, check out the link down below anyway. You can sign up for a free seven day trial and try either three group classes or one private lesson within seven days. Oh, the French and their food, huh? Oh la la. <laughs> we have got quite a few French expressions to do with food today. The first up is couper le poire en deux. So literally it means to cut the pear in half, but what it's actually meaning figuratively is to split the bill. For example, in a sentence, ils sont allés au restaurant et ont coupé le poire en deux. The next expression is one of my faves and it is s'occuper de ses oignons. So literally that means to look after one's onions. But what this idiomatic expression actually means is to mind your own business, mind your beeswax. So if you are being lectured by someone who's trying to tell you how to live your life, you might want to say something like this. Arrête de me dire comment gérer ma vie et occupe-toi de tes oignons. So stop telling me how to live my life and mind your own business. The next expression is one of the cutest ones I've ever heard, I think, in the French language. I absolutely love it. And it is j'ai le pêche. J'ai le pêche means I'm feeling peppy, I'm in a good mood, I've got energy. I'm feeling good, right? J'ai le pêche. J'ai le pêche used to be an expression that was more for French youth, whereas older folks would say j'ai la banane. I have the banana instead but now most people would say j'ai la pêche and good moods aren't reserved just for fruit either <laughs> you could also say j'ai la patate i have the potato or even j'ai la frite i have the fry they all mean the same thing pick your favorite edible props are completely optional <laughs> if i was to chuck an example in here you could say Oh, j'ai la pêche ce soir. Allons danser. I'm feeling good tonight. Let's go dancing. The next expression is les carottes sont cuites. Les carottes sont cuites. And this means the carrots are cooked. 
but what it actually is trying to say is it's done it's over it's finished like we have no more hope it's a done deal essentially so if you're watching a football game you could say oh ils perdent 3 à 0 les cartes sont cuites so they're losing three to zero. It's done. It's over. Next up, we have mettre du beurre dans les épinards. And this means putting butter in the spinach, which by the way, the French do quite a lot. I remember that actually as a side vegetable, sort of steamed spinach with some butter in it would make a really good side to a classic French meal. But what they're trying to say here is to top up your income. So when you're putting butter in your spinach, you're topping up that income. So imagine you started a side hustle, you have a shop on Etsy where you sell some knitting patterns let's say and let's say that it is topping up your monthly income by quite a significant amount it's working really well you could say mon magasin Etsy ça a vraiment mis du beurre dans les épinards next up we have être fauché comme les blés fauché is broke or, or hard, um, but in this context it means broke, and blé is wheat, so to be broke like wheat, which means to be broke or to be absolutely penniless. So for example, you could say, ma grand-mère a toujours été fauchée comme les blés. Next up we have, c'est pour ma pomme. C'est pour ma pomme, it's for my apple. But what this actually means is, it's a treat, it's on me, it's my shout. So if you're shouting your friends at the bar, you could say, allez, c'est pour ma pomme. Next up we have, c'est du pain béni, which literally means, it is blessed bread. What the French are saying here is, it's a godsend. So for example, if you've been out of work for a while and you just landed a new contract, you could say, mon nouveau contrat, c'est du pain béni pour moi. Alrighty, next up we have pédalé dans la choucroute. Now if you don't know, la choucroute is a French dish from the Alsace region and it is like fermented cabbage, so I guess like sauerkraut, with charcuterie, so sausages and other bits of meat, and potatoes as well. It's a very heavy, salty, wintry dish and it is rather delicious, but that is what choucroute is. So what does it mean to be pedaling around in choucroute? It means to go around in circles. So if you were in a meeting, you're trying to take a decision and it was just going round and round in circles, you could say, on pédale dans la choucroute là, ça n'avance pas. Next up we have être soupe au lait. So literally to be milk soup. So what does it mean to be milk soup? It means to be short tempered. So if you're talking about someone who loses their temper very easily, you could say, il est vraiment soupoulé. Ils sont rage pour rien. Another expression with a very similar meaning to lose your temper is avoir la mutarde qui monte au nez, which literally means to have mustard that goes up the nose. Now this one I can understand more than the milky soup thing because like there's, there's heat to mustard, right? So if you mustard up the nose, I see the fiery connotations with losing your temper a little bit more. So if you're starting to get particularly frustrated, you could say something like this. Oh, ça commence à me gonfler. J'ai la moutarde qui me monte au nez. Alrighty, next up we have casser du sucre sur le dos de quelqu'un, which literally means to break sugar on someone's back, which almost sounds relatively nice, but it actually means to talk about someone behind their back or maybe to stab someone in the back. So for example, you could say, Arrête de casser du sucre sur le dos de tes collègues. Ça va te revenir dessus. Stop breaking the sugar on the back of your colleagues. It's gonna come back to you. Next up, again with some pain, some bread, because we all know how much the French worship their pain. We have the saying, pour une bouchée du pain. So for a little bit of bread. And it means very cheap, because great bread is still relatively cheap in France. For example, if you got some chairs on a really good deal, you could say, ces chaises, je les ai eu pour une bouchée de pain. Next up, we have à ma sauce, à ma sauce at my source, which means to my style, to my liking. If you have to write a report, but you want to put your touch on it, you could say, je crie ce rapport à ma sauce. Next up, we have one of my absolute favorites, which is en faire tout un fromage, which literally means to make all a cheese, but it actually means to make a big deal out of something. So if you have your friend who's absolutely panicking and getting herself in a state over something, you could say, arrête d'en faire tout un fromage, c'est pas la fin du monde. 
By the way, I would love to hear from you so far. What are your favorite expressions so far in the comments down below? And if you're a Frenchie, what have I missed so far? Who knows, maybe it's coming up in the next part of the video. I've got some good ones left. The next one is mettre son grain de sel, which literally means to put your grain of salt, which actually translates to the equivalent of, you know, giving my two cents or having to have your say. So if you have someone who's always sticking their nose in your business and you're sort of venting about it to someone, you could say something like this. Il faut toujours qu'il vienne mettre son grain de sel dans nos affaires celui-là. This expression I think sounds super cute. It is maman ghetto, maman ghetto, which is mother cake. But what it actually means is an overindulgent mother or a kind of mother hen or maybe even to the point of helicopter mother in English. So for example you could say elle couvre ses enfants d'attention. C'est une maman gâteau. Next up we have elle se fait cuire un oeuf which is go to make yourself an egg. In other words it means to get lost. So if someone's talking to you and you want them to just get lost you could say j'en ai marre va te faire cuire un oeuf. Next up we have mi figue mi raison which literally means half fig half grape. It means when something was neither good nor bad. For example you could say ce film ne m'a pas embellé un peu mi figue mi raisin. Next up, avoir du pain sur la planche. And this literally means to have bread on the breadboard, but it actually means to be super busy, to be a bit overloaded at the moment. For example, you could say l'équipe a du pain sur la planche. Elle va être occupée jusqu'à la fin de l'année. The team has so much going on, it's going to be busy until the end of the year. Next up, we have mettre de l'eau dans son vin. And it means to put water in one's wine. But what it actually means figuratively is to back off or to tone it down. So for example, you could say to someone, relax, et mets un peu d'eau dans ton vin. C'est pas si grave. Relax, tone it down. It's not so serious. Next up, we have c'est du gâteau. Kind of like a piece of cake. It's easy, but instead they just say, it's cake. C'est vraiment trop facile. C'est du gâteau. Next up, I absolutely love this one. Puree. <laughs> oh, puree. <laughs> it means, oh, mashed potatoes. And it is a more innocent way of saying putain, which I know you know what that means. So for example, oh puree, regarde le tas de la voiture. This expression is a little bit gross. Cracher dans le soup. Cracher dans le soup. And cracher, to crash, means to spit. So to spit in the soup is the exact equivalent of to bite the hand that feeds you. So if someone's done you a favor and for example letting you stay at their place and it hasn't really worked out very well and they've been annoying you but they've done you a favor all the same and you find yourselves kind of you know venting about the person you could say arrêtons de cracher dans le soup sans lui ça n'aurait pas marché stop spitting in the soup without him it would have never worked next one is super cute raconter des salades raconter des salades so literally it means to tell lettuces but it means telling stories for example you could say depuis tout petit il a toujours pris un melon plaisir à ne raconter Good de salade. Ever since he was little, he was always taking pleasure in telling stories. Next up, we have ne pas savoir quelle sauce on va être mangé. So not knowing which sauce we are going to eat. But what this actually means is to not know what fate has in store for you. So for example, if your manager has called you in for a meeting, you could say, je ne sais pas à quelle sauce mon patron va me manger. And last but not least, we have rouler quelqu'un dans la farine. So to roll somebody in flour, which actually means to fool somebody. So for example, if your uncle bought a secondhand radio and it was advertised as nearly new and it barely works, you could say, il s'est fait rouler dans la farine avec cette histoire de radio d'occasion. Alrighty friends, I hope that you have enjoyed these tasty French idiomatic expressions all using food. I would love to hear which ones are your favorite down below. Otherwise, if you know some other hilarious expressions with food that I have left off the list, please let me know as well. I always love to have a good chuckle at those in the comments. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching all the way into the end and I'll see you here next week on the Not Even French YouTube channel. A bientôt!